another weekend morning back in the kitchen on Jury Lane. And guess what? It's time to make the muffins. Well, today we have a special treat, boys and girls. We're going to learn about other boys and girls that are getting a chance at a bright future from the Aquasani Boys and Girls Club. Let's see, let's see what daily activities they get to engage in. Now, the Aquasani Boys and Girls Club is a fun and loving center that's devoted to production, caring, and trying to promote the welfare of the community. Today, the Boys and Girls Club touches more than six, the lives of over 600 children annually and their programs and activities are coordinated and designed to advance the children's academic success. Well, today, they're in great need. They're in need of a new facility. Why, currently, their housing is just too small. It's even cramped. But guess what? They're about to build a new home. A new facility, a new headquarters for the Boys and Girls Club. Let's see what they need. Let's see what they need to build bright and better futures for their boys and girls. I'm Julia Beck Skitters and I'm president of the club at this present time and I've been here since 2002. The funding was the most major thing to get started. A lot of board members had to kind of commit to put so much money into the committee. I think the total over the first two, three years, I think I had donated like almost 20,000 to the club just to keep, keep going and keep progressing and getting bigger. And from that classroom at housing to coming to this building which we didn't have no rooms upstairs it was just a big building and we had to do a lot of remodeling in here to put classrooms and bring the kids in here and uh, we just gradually grew and grew and the board was together and people were following up when we first started we had i think i bet you 25 people that came to the table at first beginning in 2000 and um it started falling down and everything and now to this day we're at nine board members but we always had our ups and downs it's always the financial that we're always struggling at to do different programs and our goal was always to get the outside programs that are already like your diabetes your mental health your all your different programs in the area we use the programs on a canadian side that come in and MCA and TRI both had programs that we would try to use and bring them in. Same with our police departments. We had the, the Canadian police, the American police, the uh, Border Patrol. They come in here now. And we're working on all these different programs now. And the other thing is we reached out to Canton, Potsdam, the colleges, and we would get students there to come in to do a lot of tutoring for the kids. And that really uh, took off. and. The major thing is the funding is to keep this going for the kids here. I started working for the Boys and Girls Club of June in June of 2002, shortly before the grand opening in August of 2002. 
Originally when we first opened, I believe there were 10 kids that came to the club and by the end of our first year we had an average daily attendance of 35 kids. And now we're over 100 kids a night, so that's the biggest change for me seeing that over the years. Over the years, the other thing I have seen um, that has changed is the involvement of our volunteers at the club, especially on the board level. Um, our board of directors that we have right now, is just, they're just fantastic. They all have their own careers, they work full time, they all have their own involvements, but they still manage to find time to dedicate to the club. And from starting in 2002 till now, I see how much you know they're invested in the club and how interested they are in helping us out despite their own commitments. So that makes me want to work here another 15 years. We need volunteers. <laughs> you know, there's so many kids that come here and they all need a little bit of TLC, their own little bits of attention that um, they need. Um, so we need a lot of volunteers to come and it would be nice to see more parents. I love the fact that I get to work for an organization that helps parents and families in the community and through that we also help kids after school and make sure that there's a safe place for them, spend a little more time with us that way they can see what we do and the programs we offer um, and then just keep supporting us. I mean it's really nice when we do a registration for after school program and we fill up in under an hour so the continued support of the parents and community is great. Wait, 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 there is more! In 2015, the Akwesasne Boys and Girls Club won two distinguished awards from Boys and Girls Club of America. Our board president, Julia Back Skitters, won the Maytag Dependable Leader. She's only one of 15 BGCA professionals to win this award. This award came with a $25,000 scholarship for her to be able to give away to the kids we served. Congratulations to our board president, Julia Back Skitters, and our Maytag Dependable Leader. Thank you, Julia, we love you. Also in 2015, the Akwesasne Boys and Girls Club Board of Directors won the Eagle Award. This is a prestigious award handed down from Boys and Girls Clubs for working board members. This award was awarded to them because of the work they have done for our organization, but also because of their attendance, their dedication, and their commitment to the Akwesasne Boys and Girls Club. So thank you and congratulations to the Akwesasne Boys and Girls Club Board. Hello, my name is Jessica Krijak. I'm the executive director here at the Opus New Boys and Girls Club. Um, I've been the director since 2001. We opened our doors, um, actually I've been the director since 2011. We opened our doors in 2001 and uh, we've served over 600 registered members last year. Um, we provide after school programs as well as summer programs as well as youth pro uh, athletic programs here at the Opus New Boys and Girls Club. We, our average daily attendance here in the after school unit, we have two units. We have a main clubhouse here, and then we also have a unit at the St. Richard's Mock School. Um, in the main unit, we have about 109 kids, and in the Mock School unit, we have about 28 kids in the after school program. 
but in the summer times we have 65 teens here at the club and we have 150 youth at the Mohawk School. So we kind of switch things up during the summertime. We also offer cultural programming for all of our Mohawk youth here. 96% uh, of our kids here that we serve are from the Okazosne Mohawk community. Um, we also do homework help as well as um, Project Learn. We do a various Boys and Girls Club programming. Uh, so we have a lot of character building, community building type of programming here as well. The Okazosne Boys and Girls Club is our own 501c3. We are our own entity here in the Okazosne Mohawk community. Um, we are under the jurisdiction of the St. Regis Mohawk Tribe here in upstate New York, um, which is a federally recognized tribe. And the club itself uh, was established as its own entity under the tribe. And we uh, serve Okazosne youth here in the community, but we are also a charter Boys and Girls Club of America unit. But this is also basket made by one of our teens. We do, like I was saying, we do a lot of cultural programming. And um, in our community, we have a lot of sweet grass basket makers. This is more of a utility basket. Um, there's also some very fancy baskets. You, we were just looking at one on the wall over there. But one of the kids made this for me last year. So I have that as well as just a whole bunch of artwork done by various kids and thank you letters to the board and to um, our program. Just you know, expressing their feelings and their artistic abilities, so I enjoy it. So this is a multi-purpose room slash uh, gymnasium. Um, this is where the kids get to have a little bit of fun. And right now we're serving about 60 kids in our staycation program. The school's out currently this week. So with school being out, our club doors are open. So we have about 60 kids that are usually in this program. So you'll see them, I think they're playing musical chairs. <laughs> The kids come upstairs. This is our tech center, our fully equipped tech center. We have about 24 systems in here as well as a smart board. They do various programs from Boys and Girls Club of America, including NetSmart, which talks about internet safety and how to be safe on the internet. So the kids are have to take that program prior to being able to get access to any one of our systems. Um, but the kids come up here. This is the tech center. Adjacent to the tech center are three classrooms. When the kids come in every single day, they head to their classrooms, drop off their stuff, check in with their coordinators, and then head downstairs so to dinner. Our capital campaign was launched about three years ago, um, primarily because we've been at capacity for four, almost five years now. Uh, we can currently only serve 125 kids in our after-school program. We have a, a registered number of 691 kids. So we definitely cannot serve our full 600 um, with only having 125 spots here at the club. So we've seen a definite need to have a capital campaign. So we actually sat down with the kids and talked to them about exactly what they envisioned. And of course, all the simple things came up there. They wanted a gym, they wanted a game room. Um, they wanted a new kitchen with a teaching area so that they could learn how to cook. One of the greatest things that came out of sitting down with the youth is we had a six-year-old say that he wanted a green building. They didn't just want another building. They wanted something that was going to be sustainable. So we really took that to heart. So we launched our capital campaign three years ago. We're gearing towards a $7 million um, capital bill, uh, capital campaign that uh, we're hoping to build a lead certified building. So we're currently on target, uh, hopefully, to, to meet that um, need in the next five years. We're currently in the private stages of soliciting funds um, at the tribal level as well as um, at the national level uh, with some investors. So uh, this year is really going to tell the tale for us to see uh, how far along we get with our capital project. So this is the little kids' room. 
Um, this is the kindergarten through to uh, second grade. Um, and we have just about 16 kids this in this class. Our, um, this is fifth and sixth grade, but this is also our GED room. We actually offer GED outside of club hours on Mondays and Wednesdays to adult, young adults as well as older adults here in the community that re are recommitting to their education. So this is not only the 5-6 room, but this is also the GED room and we also uh, provide a GED test testing uh, four times a year to uh, the Uncle Sesame community. So last year we had 26 graduates come out of our GED test program. So this is our third and fourth grade room. Like I was saying earlier, as the kids come in, they come up into their classrooms um, and they're here for majority of the evening. And um, we do so much here for the kids of Uncle's Us name. Uh, we serve, like I was saying, over 600 registered members, but we also provide meals to the kids here. We also provide a safe place for them to grow and learn. Um, and if somebody's really interested in, in, in investing in the youth of Uncle's Us name, um, donating to the Ecclesiastes New Boys and Girls Club would probably be uh, their best way to invest. Um, we are the largest uh, we are the largest youth-based organization here in Ecclesiastes with over 600 registered members. So I'm sure you're wondering about our name. We are the Ecclesiastes New Boys and Girls Club, and actually Ecclesiastes is a Mohawk word meaning land where the partridge trumps. That's the name that we have associated with our entire territory here in Akwazesne. Um, we are actually governed by the Sandwiches Mohawk Tribe, who is our major donor. 55% of our total operating budget comes from the Sandwiches Mohawk Tribe that owns the Akwazesne Mohawk Casino. Um, but like I was saying, only 55% of our overall operating budget comes from them. The other 45% comes from foundations, from federal and state funding, and from contributors like you. Um, over 6% of our operating budget comes from private donations as well. So, um, but the Aquasesne community has been very generous in ensuring that that 6% is met every single year. Um, the community here at large um, is very, very, very unique community. We are a border community here. We uh, reside along the St. Lawrence River, and half of our community is in Canada and half of it's in New York State. So if you've ever been to our community, you could easily drive right into Canada without going through customs, but you actually have to return to the States um, almost immediately, because most of the territory that resides on the Canadian side is landlocked. Um, but if you need to go over to the island, which is still part of Alcazar State, you have to go through the Canadian border, or the US border, per se. So depending on which direction you're going in. Uh, so we have two governing bodies, we have the Sandwich and Mohawk Tribe that governs the U.S. side, and we have the Mohawk Council of Chiefs that governs the Canadian side. Um, so we're very, very unique here in Akwesasne, uh, and we serve youth from both sides. It's always been our model that we see Akwesasne youth, regardless of residency. Primarily because we are at capacity, so we try to have silent areas in various parts of the club. So this is kind of like a reading nook for some of the 5th and 6th graders, and. Uh, just to come in and either read to the little ones or to, to just read quietly. Um, so we're going to head downstairs and what's downstairs is our teen room, our canteen, our kitchen, um, as well as our multi-purpose room and an art room. So uh, we have various areas throughout the clubs that the kids can take advantage of. We also have, um, as you turn around the corner, you'll see uh, some of the highlighted wording. This is actually a Mohawk word. Uh, for staircase or going down. So. Uh, also here I wanted to kind of point out is um, this is the little flyer to join the Mohawk Sing group here. It's talking about the cultural program that we offer. Uh, we actually teach uh, tweens how to do Mohawk social songs here. We have, um, actually we have a fluent speaker as well named Miss Joanne. And her and Mrs. Cheyenne are pulling together our singing group this year. So this is our teen lounge with a couple of our teens in here hanging out. Um, and we allow them to decorate and their team coordinator ensures um, that they have programming in here in the afternoons. Uh, we do cooking classes, they have a teen night on Friday nights. We're open just for them from 6 till 
um, midnight. So we have about 60 registered teens, but we probably see about 20 on a daily basis in and out of the program. We have a lot of issues with space, but one of the things we do here is sewing classes, and that's why you see the sewing machine. She's probably getting them out, trying to make sure they're all in good working order um, in preparation for our sewing classes so that the girls and the boys can learn how to uh, sew their regalia, because a lot of them, when they graduate, will wear regalia instead of a traditional cap and gown. So that's why you see the sewing machine out here. So guys, what do you guys like most about what you got boys and girls about? Children, because they call me Duda, <laughs> and I'm honored. <laughs> I enjoy it. I wouldn't go anywhere else. I'm here till they carry me out. <laughs> they can serve very well, and not hardly anything. Nothing is packaged. Everything is fresh, except I didn't grow the grapes. <laughs> Today they have an Corn dogs, they're having baked beans, green beans, grapes, and milk. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's fun, it's a challenge, and I love doing for them because I really don't see my grandchildren that much. They live far away, so they're, they're my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. They're my standards. <laughs> We have the Mohawk language emerged into our clubhouse here uh, for a couple of different reasons. We started a, a, a new cultural language program about two years ago here at the Ecosystem Boys and Girls Club because according to the United Nations, our language is critically endangered, meaning we only have 3,000 um, language speakers here in the community. We have even less uh, first language speakers, meaning when they were born, their only language was Mohawk. And that's under a thousand. So our language here is a huge part of our community. So as we go through at the club, we felt like it was our need and desire to at least educate our kids why they're here so that they can recognize the language and hopefully uh, continue that language. Most, Some of our kids come from the Freedom School as well as the Skulajiwa program, which are two immersion programs um, that serve the Akwazesne U. So I thank you for coming out. We've pretty much seen most of the building. We're back here in my office now. Um, I hope I've been able to provide you a wealth of information about what the Aquasusting Boys and Girls Club does and how we serve the youth of our community. Um, I hope that I was able to really um, get you to understand the need here, but also to see all of the kids that we serve and all of the special things that we do for them. Um, it's really a labor of love here. We are a family of youth development professionals that provides a service to over 600 youth here in our community. Um, 
and we're in need of a new building as you could see through as we went through um we have boxes kind of on the floor because we don't have enough storage space um it was a little cooler downstairs today because we have insulation issues but we still continue to serve as long as we're serving the kids in a healthy and safe manner we still continue to serve regardless um, so if you're interested in donating to the Alcosis New Boys and Girls Club to our $7 million capital project, please visit us at www.myabgc.com. The three priorities of Boys and Girls Club of America is, the first priority is your health as an employee, your health. And then the second, the health and well-being of your family. And then the third priority is the safety of our kids. And we really feel like the Alcosis New Boys and Girls Club and it embodies all three of those priorities. You know, I'm proud to be a, a part of Boys and Girls Club of America, but I'm also proud to be a part of the Oklahoma City Boys and Girls Club because we definitely are a, a family here. We support each other um, and we love what we do. And you have to love what you do to serve this many youth in our community. Well, welcome back. I'm still trying to bake the muffins. But finally, finally, I think we're finished. I hope you enjoyed our show today. If you would like to make an order or donate muffins to charity, then please go to the website listed below. With every muffin order, we donate muffins to the charity of your choice. <laughs> I call it giving your dough to charity. <laughs> I also encourage you to donate directly to the featured charity today by going directly to our website and getting their information. Thank you very much for watching and keep on dancing through life by giving to others through love. Let me finish baking these muffins. And see you next time.